Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today, I want to continue on my series of deep dives, and I'm going to talk about the chapter on coordination. It's a long chapter, and when I got to this chapter as I was doing these deep dives, I kind of skipped it because it was so long, and I had already done an episode on coordination of intention. So check that episode out. And I didn't want to repeat myself on the channel, but I do need to dedicate several episodes to this. So we're going to start out and we're going to go section by section and discuss this a little bit. I think that might be a little bit easier than a big, gigantic five-hour episode. So the coordination, according to Zealand, is very important. But my understanding of coordination, I suspect there might be a translation error of some kind. Because coordination doesn't seem to make sense. Are we coordinating the heart and mind? That was my initial understanding. But why would there be such a long chapter? Obviously, it's very important. So when you look at the different sections of this chapter, there's some very interesting ideas that come out of it. One of the things that I'm struggling or have struggled with, and we all struggle with, are insecurities and a lack of self-belief. And Zeeland calls this the insecurity labyrinth. And so I wanted to talk about this section of the book and discuss it and see perhaps if we can use this to to overcome some of our insecurities on our path to reality creation. The book begins with the quote, I do not want or hope I intend. And it begins with the section, Insecurity Labyrinth. Zeeland says that no one and no thing can prevent you from reaching your goal once you have taken the path through the right door except yourself in other words only lack of faith and lack of confidence can hinder your progress lack of self-belief and lack of confidence are basically one and the same thing both undermine the effectiveness of inner intention and make outer intention practically impossible nothing you do when you are lacking in confidence will be done well The more stressed you are about the need to do something well, the worse the result will be. Lack of self-belief, together with the tendency to exaggerate the complexity of challenges, leads to a state of extreme tension or feeling of being totally overwhelmed. I had this happen recently with my business, and it's just one of those businesses. It's kind of like walking along the edge of a cliff looking out at a beautiful scenery, but I could easily look at the scenery or I could look down the edge and, and fall off. So this extreme feeling creates excess potential and having to learn not to look down the edge and look at the beauty around me, taking one step at a time is a big learning experience for me because I'm a struggler, I'm a worrier. So the extreme feeling of being overwhelmed is caused by the initial tension squeezing in on itself. The outer importance you associate with your goal makes the desire to reach it excruciating or wearying, whereas inner importance makes you doubt your own ability. Together, this all leads to feelings of insecurity. Insecurity tightens the grip of inner intention as hard as it can in its efforts to achieve the goal. Even without taking the impact of balanced forces into consideration, the effect of this intense grip is always the direct opposite of the original intention. The effort required to maintaining several excess potentials at once takes up all your personal energy. You can see how many potentials are involved, inner and outer importance, frustration, and the effort required to keep yourself in check and the situation under control. There's just not enough free energy to go around. It is no wonder people end up feeling inhibited and tense, which makes them clumsy and awkward, and in turn causes them to tighten the grip of control even further. This is why people end up feeling overwhelmed, unable to move or utter anything intelligible. When a person is in this state, it might appear as if their intention is being held in a vice, but actually once things get to this stage, intention is absent altogether. All the energy that would fuel intention has gone on maintaining excess potentials. Insecurity in the form of anxiety and panic is pure feed for pendulums. Panic generates prognoses that start, but what if? 
That's me. And that's something that I continually learn because it's easy for me to say, oh, but what if? When a person is feeling insecure, the prognosis is usually pessimistic in nature. In this case, energy is channeled into running negative scenarios around in your mind and worrying about them. This also uses up the energy of intention. The fact that the energy is being used up is not as bad as what the energy is being used for. Stress, panic, and fear are all powerful generators for our worst expectations, which as you know, do come true. Guilt feelings are another rich source of insecurity that blossom into a bouquet of inadequacy and inferiority, lameness, and worthlessness. What question can there be of any self-confidence with that array of feeling? Guilt and everything connected with it causes the meridians to narrow. At the same time, the energy of intention is only sufficient to motivate actions that are feeble, indecisive, and mediocre. If you have a propensity to indulge in feelings of guilt, there will always be manipulators around you like moths around a light bulb. Sensing your weakness, they assert themselves at your expense, happily devouring your unprotected energy. They play constantly on your feelings of guilt while you endlessly explain and justify your behavior, deepening your insecurity even further. Insecurity creates a vicious circle. The stronger the importance and desire, the deeper the insecurity, the tighter the grip of control over yourself personally, and the situation, the more intense your tension. The more you feel panic and anxiety, the more likely that you they are to become justified. Guilt eventually turns life into the wretched existence of the loser. In an attempt to find a way out of the labyrinth, people desperately try and acquire confidence. One way in which they do this is to launch an outright attack on the world. In a preemptive maneuver, they attempt to demonstrate their strength and hide their lack of confidence. People try and erect a wall of confidence by impacting the world with their head-on vigorous decisiveness. This kind of approach takes a lot of energy, but the wall of confidence will keep on crumbling. The energy behind forceful impact is spent on creating excess potentials and resisting the alternative's flow. In any case, this approach inevitably leads to failure, and the battle to construct a wall of confidence starts all over again. Another way of trying to acquire confidence is not to bother building a foundation for confidence, but simply to put everything at, sta at a stake. This kind of self-confidence is the same sheepish manager manager turned inside out. It is a way of creating the impression of something that is not really there. If confidence is not based on anything, it generates excess potential, but excess potential is not the only problem. You usually end up injuring someone else's interests when you act in a cocksure or overconfident manner. A man standing in the middle of a desert shouting, the world is my oyster, can shout all they like. As long as he is not bothering anyone else, balanced forces will leave him alone. However, when unfounded self-assuredness begins to compare itself with the abilities of others, dependent relationships are created. Confidence that is based on comparing oneself with others is pure excess potential. Especially if one's confidence is based on a scornful or contemptuous attitude to other people. False confidence will be sooner or later punished with a clip round the ear, or if you will excuse the expression, a kick up the backside. There's also a kind of ecstatic confidence that a shy person feels when they suddenly experience a whiff of self-confidence. This is also false kind of confidence because it's based on a temporary emotional high that quickly passes. So how can you acquire true self-confidence? Fighting feelings of insecurity is futile, and neither can insecurity be hidden behind a screen of false courage. You cannot hide the insecurity anyway, and the energy spent on trying to create it will turn against you. Trying to force confidence is also pointless. Any efforts made to artificially instigate courage and determine when they are not already present will also be wasted. 
Force yourself to keep it together when you are actually falling apart is totally impossible. As we said above, the energy of intention cannot be grasped or clenched. It just ends up being spent on maintaining the grip of control, leaving nothing behind to motivate action. It is ridiculous to try and develop confidence in any way at all. You might think that confidence grows by taking decisive action, but in reality, when a person stops fighting and starts taking action, the energy of intention releases its grip and switches from excess potentials to the implementation of action. In the end, the hands do what the eyes fear, and everything turns out well. Confidence is not developed through action. It is the energy of intention released. You cannot develop confidence. Confidence is like energy. It is either present or not. Confidence like a self-belief cannot be acquired by the means of auto-suggestion. You can repeat affirmations on how self-confident you are until you are blue in the face, but it will remain a naive and fruitless exercise. It is no different to fighting the symptoms of an illness without curing the cause. Whatever you try and do with your insecurity is not going anywhere. Wherever you look for confidence, you will not find it. Neither will you be able to maintain the corresponding thought transmissions necessary to be on a constant wave of confidence. You might say to yourself in the morning, that is I, I'm confident. Nothing can shake my self-confidence. I'm solid as a rock. Try it and you will see what happens afterwards. For a while, you will feel more confident, which will make you feel extremely happy and even more confident. But very soon, a pendulum will arrange some nasty provocation and you will not even notice how you come crashing down from the wave of confidence. Once again, you will be irritated and depressed. A problem will come out of nowhere. Something will get you down. and You will feel, have reason to fear and hate the world as before. You thought you glimpsed a light at the end of the tunnel, but you came to a dead end instead. So how can you free yourself from the intricate labyrinth? You cannot actually because there is no exit. The secret to the labyrinth is that its walls will crumble when you give up looking for the exit and abandon importance. The reasons for insecurity can be separated into two groups. The first group consists of internal causes such as obsessive concern with one's own personal qualities. This gives rise to feelings like dissatisfaction with self on account of one's shortcomings and lack of certain strengths, feelings of inferiority in comparison to others. Bashfulness, fear of failure, looking stupid. The second group consists of external factors linked with unrealistic overestimation of external factors. As a result, unfounded fears arise in relation to the gap between one's meager inner qualities and the high demands of the external world feeling very small in a big city, and finally, fear of reality. The paradox lies in the fact that to acquire self-confidence, you have to let go of wanting to acquire it. The labyrinth's walls are made out of importance. You are walking around the labyrinth trying to get rid of your insecurity and acquire self-confidence. Confidence is a wild goose chase another pendulum, a deceptive mirage, a trap for importance. Confidence is a pendulum game in which they always win. Where there is belief, there is always room for doubt. Likewise, where there is confidence, there is always room for hesitation and indecisiveness. Confidence is a kind of belief in success. A negative adjustment can be made to any scenario and one small adjustment is more than enough. To bring down the walls of confidence. The notion of confidence is constructed on excess potentials and dependent relationships. A any variations on the theme of confidence take roughly the following format. I am determined. I am resolute and unshakable. I am better than everyone else. Nothing can stop me. I overcome all obstacles. I am stronger and braver than the rest. And it goes on in the same vein. Confidence is nothing more than temporary excess potential. Whatever packaging you wrap it up in, 
it remains nothing more than excess potential. Even self-control is nothing more than a temporary concentration of tension for confidence is just the opposite value of insecurity. Both potentials demand an output of energy and the first will be an indivertibly destroyed by balanced forces. Therefore, the pursuit of confidence is as fruitless as chasing after an illusory happiness that hovers somewhere in the future. And so we have just successfully broken through another false belief. But how are we going to manage without confidence? Transurfing offers an alternative, coordination. What coordination represents you will find out very shortly in the next section. Why do we need confidence? To boldly and determinedly conquer our place in the sun. Pendulums have imposed one sacrosanct postulate, which sounds, there is no such thing as a free lunch. If you want to achieve something, you have to fight for it, insist, demand, outstrip your rivals, and elbow your way forward. But in order to act boldly and indecisively, and decisively, you have to have confidence. And as you know, the path of battle and rivalry is not the only way. If you reject the pendulum scenario, you can calmly take what is yours without having to put pressure on, without having to fight, but simply by finding the will to have. Freedom of choice represents a pernicious threat to pendulums. If everyone were to claim what was rightfully theirs without fighting for it, without spending energy creating obstacles and then overcoming them, the pendulums would be left with nothing, despite the fact that it is extremely difficult to imagine the world without pendulums. The false stereotypes and beliefs they create are not as hard and fast as the laws of motion, for example. Awareness and intention enable you to ignore the pendulum's game and claim what is yours without having to fight for it. When there is freedom without struggle, there is no need for confidence. Confidence has only one origin importance confidence represents the same potential as insecurity it is just the opposite polarity of the same quality and both polarities are rooted in dependency on external factors and circumstances the following metaphor describes the nature of this dependency the, ne- the pendulum leads a person along a path like a puppet on a string the person does not believe they can choose their own path or even walk independently. If the strings are kept, even the person walks with confidence like a child holding on to its mother's hand, but as soon as the strings relax and give some slack or start to jerk about, the person feels insecure and tries to tighten the strings. It is not that the pendulum is holding on to the person tightly. It is that the person will not let go of the strings of importance. They are afraid to let go because they are under the power of dependency which creates the illusion of support and confidence. In the end, the child will let go of its mother's hand and walk on its own and the mother will encourage the child to do so. Pendulums, on the other hand, will try to convince the person that they will not be able to choose their own path by themselves or walk without the support of the strings. If the person were to shake off the delusion and let go of the strings of importance, they would find that they will are able to walk freely wherever they wished and simply choose their goal without having to fight for it. Once a person has their freedom, they no longer need confidence and the illusion of support that creates. All they really need is coordination to stop them from falling. Of course, they have become used to the stability and support they received when they were under the pendulum's power and holding on to the strings of importance. However, when they were giving their energy away to the pendulums, They would constantly disturb the balance and end up dangling helplessly at the end of their pseudo-safety ropes. If a person could let go of the strings, all they would have to do is maintain their balance would be to create importance and excess potential to avoid it. Confidence as a support would no longer be necessary because there is no importance. There is nothing to guard or conquer. There is nothing to fear, to be anxious about. As long as I do not attribute excess meaning to anything, the layer of my world will not be distorted by excess potentials. Instead, I abandon the struggle and I go with the flow. I am empty. And so there is nothing that can be hooked into, although this does not mean that I am hanging suspended in a vacuum. Finally, if I want it, the freedom of choice is mine. 
There is no need to struggle anymore. I just calmly walk my path and take what is mine. Unlike shaky confidence, this is a new state of conscious, composed coordination. Where does the feeling of peace come from? The feeling of inner calm comes from not creating inner importance and so having nothing to prove. When you carry the belief that you are an important person, the desire arises to prove it to others and excess potential is created. Then balanced forces will do all they can to demystify the myth of your importance, repeatedly creating conditions designed to test your confidence to the limit. The slightest pang of inferiority prompts a person into struggling to raise and assert their senses of worth. Let go of the need to prove anything to yourself or others and just accept whatever you needed to prove as a fundamental truth. You can spend your whole life battling to prove your worth and yet the moment you let go of the battle you acquire it. A feeling of insecurity is intrinsically the same as low self-esteem. So how can you improve your self-esteem? You probably think that I am now going to try to make you believe that you are much better than you give yourself credit for. This is what many psychologists do without a second thought. Is it, it is a true that the opinion of others have us is, is directly proportional to our own opinion of ourselves as long as it does not border on arrogance. The moment you acknowledge your true value, free of any self-deception, others will agree with you. The only problem is that it is not that easy to convince yourself of your own true worth. Try it. If you suffer from low self-esteem, you will not succeed in persuading yourself of the opposite. However, much you try and convince yourself of your own true worth, you will never quite be able to believe that you are special. Thoughts will creep in along the lines of, so where are they then? These qualities of mine, I can see the shortcomings, they are obvious. So I'm not going to urge you to believe in your special qualities and raise your self-esteem because I know that it would either make you smug or overconfident or shove you deeper into despair. My advice to you is to abandon the struggle for worth altogether. Do not try to believe or convince yourself of your own value. Simply let go of the battle and observe what happens. The people around you will start treating you with more respect, as if they valued you more highly. As soon as you appreciate the fact of their attitude, the need to convince yourself or try to believe in something will fall away, and you will simply know. It is a paradox, but it works every time. The battle for self-worth drains your free energy and channels it into the battle with alternatives flow and the creation of excess potentials that drums up the winds of of balanced forces together. All these circumstances create a tangled ball of problems fraught with all sorts of negative consequences. You cannot untangle the ball. Just abandon the struggle for self-worth and you will be surprised and delighted with the result. Your sense of self-worth will grow before your very eyes and your self-esteem will be enhanced and in turn the people around you will affirm your new sense of self. It is as pointless to try and deny or stamp out feelings of guilt as it is to artificially raise your self-esteem. If you have a disposition to feel guilt, you will never be able to stifle or banish the feelings of guilt you experience. So what can you do? The same thing as with low self-esteem. Stop justifying yourself to others. Only ever justify yourself when it is absolutely necessary to explain your actions. Remember, no one has the right to judge you. Whatever you've done, as long as you have not harmed anyone else. Do not take the blame publicly and do not justify your actions. Let the manipulators fall through the emptiness. Resisting the temptation to slam the door behind you, silently leave the courtroom where people gather to profit from the guilt feelings of others. Give them nothing. If you have quite a deep guilt complex, then initially it will not hurt to put the lid on your conscience for a while. Do not invite others to judge your self-worth. Only by taking this attitude and not by means of inner battle will you rid your conscience of feelings of guilt. You will see how guilt just disappears into thin air. Having abandoned the battle for self-worth and given up justifying yourself, you will have settled the score with a significant portion of inner importance. As feelings of guilt and low self-worth are predominant manifestations of inner importance, all other types of excess 
potential are derivative of these two. You will no longer feel the need for protection as there is no longer anything to protect. Neither will you need to pounce on others to preempt their attack. There is a saying that goes, do not frighten anyone and you will have nothing to fear. By the same token, if you reduce the importance of external factors, they will cease to reign over you with their preeminence. The two most oppressive kinds of outer importance are fear of the unknown and feeling overwhelmed by challenges. That's me. I, I fear the unknown and I'm overwhelmed by challenges. Until I could let that stuff go. I was still locked into that pattern. Both generate the dismal potential of panic and stress. Everyone is always concerned about something. People who are insecure prefer to bow under the weight of their problems, somehow dragging their burden along with them. Strong personalities strive to overcome their difficulties with force and decisiveness. They take the fortress by storm, penetrating its walls with the excess potential of overt confidence. Insecurity, like confidence, requires energy. In the case of insecurity, the energy mainly goes into panic and anxiety. And in the case of confidence, the energy goes into overcoming obstacles. These are fairly elaborate methods of interacting with the outside world. In reality, everything is much simpler than it seems. Remember the sentence. As soon as you consciously reduce outer importance and abandon fighting against the alternative's flow, the obstacles you perceive will be cleared from your path. No, all you need now is good coordination to move with the flow and consciously control not the script but your importance levels. Energy that was previously channeled into maintaining all sorts of excess potential now goes on supporting the balance and just slightly helping the flow along with the ore of purified intention. Of course, you cannot ever totally stop attributing meaning to things in life, however hard you might try. So do not fight to negate importance. Just release the grip and transform the energy of anxiety into the energy of action. Begin the process of doing in any way you can without insistence or pressure. The energy of excess potential will disperse through action, releasing the energy of intention, and with that, complex problems will be transformed into minor ones. As far as fear of the unknown, it is concerned, neither blind faith nor auto-suggestion nor false confidence will help you deal with it effectively. You may remember that I advise not thinking about the means to achieving your goal. You will never force yourself to believe in the possibility of a distant goal or total 100% success. So abandon futile attempts to do so as your faith will come to nothing and temporary bursts of confidence quickly fade. You do not need confidence or faith. You need coordination. Coordination ma means taking pleasure in thinking about the goal as if it had already been reached letting go of the grip of control over the script and going with the alternatives flow, helping it along with the pure or of pure intention. Now, this is an important point, And it's one of the reasons why I believe that Neville Goddard is so consistent with reality transurfing and his particular method or technique is an absolute way of reducing importance. In many ways, it's the same as running a target slide, but he says here, coordination means taking pleasure in thinking about the goal as if it had already been reached coming from the place of the wish fulfilled it's the same thing letting go of the grip of control over the script and going with the flow helping it along with the aura of pure intention you go into a state of the wish fulfilled it's such a simple thing that's the coordination that he's talking about this is totally different to blind faith and success where there is faith, particularly blind faith, there's always room for doubt. It is the force potential of importance that blinds. When you go with the flow in conscious awareness, everything falls into place without excess, excessive effort. So you come from the place of the wish fulfilled. You imagine, if you can, about the goal as if you had already been reached. Where there is faith, particularly blind faith, there is always room for doubt. So by going into the state, 
the state's already been reached. So there's no confidence that you need. And it's happening from that state. And the longer that we can express that state, the better that we can overcome concerns about confidence or anxieties or worries. When you act in accordance with coordination, Zeeland says, what you previously wanted to believe in but could not because it frightened you with the unknown will soon appear from around a bend in the current. Doubts disappear when the mind is confronted with fact. Then faith is transformed into knowledge and fear of the unknown becomes satisfaction at the feeling of your own strength. The most important thing is to reduce importance and let go of controlling the script. It is also important to remember that you decide the level of complexity a challenge represents and the adjustments to the script will play in your favor if you let them. So imagine a state of the wish fulfilled, of your goal being reached. Reduce the importance because if you had reached the goal, it's not important anymore. The importance comes from not having achieved it or possibly not achieving it. The importance is a mental trick that's very powerful and coordinates with all the things we're talking about. It's a simple thing, but sometimes we need to do it through different methods. Finally, absolute coordination is achieved as a result of harmony between heart and mind. If on a conscious level, you're certain of what you want, but a worm of doubt or glimpse of depression sits in your subconscious, coordination remains an elusive quality. Harmony of heart and mind is achieved by listening to the whisperings of the heart and living true to your own credo. A lot has already been said about how and why to listen to the voice of the heart. All I will add here is that living according to your own credo means loving yourself accepting yourself the way you are not suffering from pangs of conscious or conscience or guilt and firmly acting according to the dictates of the heart and mind efforts to live true to your personal credo fall apart when self-esteem suffers and conflict arises between the heart and mind it is as you know a wonderful thing to be able to live according to your true values and beliefs it is even more wonderful to know that you do not have to create your credo. Change it or battle with it, although many people do, chipping away at their own credo as if it were literally a statue in marble. Titivating your credo will not bring you anything but fruitless soul-searching, spiritual torment, and self-doubt. Your personal credo cannot be shaped or drummed up as a result of struggle or other willful effort you already have a credo it is just that like the heart it gets sealed up in the box of importance as soon as you let go of inner and outer importance you will immediately sense that your credo has been freed when importance is at zero you have nothing to protect or conquer you simply live in accordance with it and calmly take what is yours by abandoning the battle for self-worth not inviting others to judge your worth and reducing outer importance. You finally acquire what is normally considered to be true confidence. This type of confidence is not the, the frail confidence built on excess potential, but a calm inner strength and coordination. True calm coordination does not relate to anything external, and so it requires neither confirmation nor proof. No doubt you have seen characters in films whose confidence is beyond question. True, calm, self-confidence can only come from inner self-sufficiency and the integrity of wholeness. You do not compare yourself to anyone. You are simply in a state of total balance. This kind of balance is achieved when there is a unity of heart and mind when there is no feeling of guilt, dependency, superiority, obligation, fear, or stress. In other words, when you do not disturb the balance inside yourself or in the world around you, live in harmony with the outside world, yourself, and your credo. This is the ideal we should strive towards in order to have complete confidence. That is coordination. Achieved by any other means, confidence can only be artificial. So here, 
Zeeland is saying that coordination is confidence. Coordination grants you freedom from pendulums, allowing you to move independently in whatever direction you wish to claim, whatever you desire. If at the present time you have to fulfill tiresome obligations, detach yourself and imagine that you are being filmed for a movie. Hang on, for you will have to play your role at the end, at least until the end of the current series, until you walk through the right door. Practice visualizing your target slide without thinking about the means and wait for outer intention to open the door to you. So a couple things here that we get from this lesson that Zealand is giving us. One of the things that I question on some level is when he says that confidence cannot be acquired by means of auto-suggestion. I have a confidence uh, meditation hypnosis uh, I, through using neuro-linguistic programming. Being in neuro-linguistic program for a long time, I, I've used these techniques. And like he says, it does create a fall, uh, it creates a, a level of confidence. My only observation is it fades. We, at, we, we create confidence in ourselves based on what we see in the outside world. People say, oh, you're great, and then I feel confident. You don't need other people to say anything to feel confident. So the idea is the best way to reach a state of confidence is to let go of what other people think. Create your intention. Don't worry or worry about the, the means to it being achieved. The confidence will come naturally. All of the insecurities and lack of confidence comes from ascribing importance to outside factors. So know that you are all powerful. That's hard to do because you judge that by what other people think. Confidence is nothing more than a temporary excess potential. So you have to understand that to gain the coordination he's talking about is coordinating the heart and mind, reducing the importance, taking action is another way that he says reduces that energy of excess potential. Insecurity is, it requires energy just like confidence. You're, when you become insecure, you're putting energy towards it. So, as soon as you consciously reduce the outer importance and abandon fighting against the, the flow, the obstacles you perceive will be cleared from your path. This one thing can stop so many people from achieving their dreams. They try to enter into a state of seeing the goal fulfilled, but deep down they have this insecurity. So you're not doing it properly. If you truly enter the state of the wish fulfilled, of the goal reached, then you would have that feeling of confidence, that temporary feeling of confidence is part of it. Come from that place, come from that place, from that place. It's, it's hard, it's, it's important, it's something to consider. Act in accordance with, the, with the coordination, what you previously wanted to believe in, but could not because it frightened you with the unknown will soon appear around the bend. Doubts will disappear when you act in coordination with your heart and mind and reduce importance. If you're gonna, you're, how can you worry about something if it's not important? Now, I know that's hard, but it's something to consider because you're worrying. It, it's a way of understanding where your fears and worries are coming from and why importance is just not this basic thing. It's a fundamental part. It's the martial arts of creation. It's a fundamental part of maintaining the balance of your energy as you move along this path. Take pleasure in thinking about the goal as if you've already been reached. Let go of the grip of control. You've already reached the goal. Don't be sitting and thinking about, how is this going to happen? It's impossible. I don't have any idea. Let go of the grip of control. Don't try to make it happen the way you want it to happen. Go with the flow and keep your intention pure. It's not blind faith in success. Whenever there's blind faith, there's always room for doubt. Go with the flow and conscious awareness. Everything falls into place without excess effort. So when you act in accordance with coordination, what you previously wanted to believe in but could not, 
because it frightened you. With the unknown will soon appear from around a bend in the current. Doubts disappear when the mind is confronted with fact. And then faith is transformed into knowledge and fear of the unknown becomes satisfaction at the feeling of your own strength. Now, a lot of this seems cliche, but it's important for you on your path because for for a lot of people, if you go and look at psycho-cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz, fantastic work of art in self-help literature and this was written by a plastic surgeon who had found in his clients when he would do even super minor plastic surgeries and they would begin to have a self-image about themselves go and watch Aaron Doty in one of his first major meditations that he says that transformed him was when was changing his self-image we're battling constantly with our self-image go to the core and ask yourself what these self-image issues are about is it about what some people are thinking is are you giving importance to the outer world let that stuff go accept deep inside what for what you want don't create importance just step into it with intention and you can achieve what you want at least you are free of the unnecessary burden of excess potential from those worries inner and outer importance no longer exist and you have no need to assert your superiority or hide your inferiority you fear neither the past nor the future you have nothing to protect and nothing to conquer you are free of the influence of pendulums and you can take care of yourself you are free to choose There is no need to fight to achieve your goal. All you need is the will to have. And as soon as you allow yourself to have, you can begin the process of calmly placing one foot in front of the other in the direction of your goal. Now, pendulums will impose a different scenario, forcing you to fight for your goal, declaring war on the world and yourself. Pendulums recommend starting with yourself. They make you believe that you are not perfect and so will not achieve your goal until you change. Once you have changed, then you must join the battle for a place in the sun, as Zeeland says. There is only one main motivation behind this scenario, which is to drain the victim's energy. By battling with yourself, you give your energy to the pendulum. If you concentrate on the goal as if you already achieved it, your doors will open and the means will take care of themselves. Whatever you do, do not force yourself to allow yourself to have. Do not force yourself to picture the target slide. You should not push yourself. Do not pressure yourself or tense up. None of this is pressure related. That's something that he later on enforces. Take pleasure in having exciting thoughts. Abandon importance and end the battle. Nothing is achieved by battling. There is no battle. It's it's required for you to have a carefree, lighthearted resolve. Don't try to release your grip of importance. If you feel like you're battling to release, that's also a problem. Importance is the underlying cause of effort and compulsive grip. You cannot relax the grip if you are battling with it. Abandon importance and the grip will relax of its own accord. Reducing importance shifts the arrow that indicates the direction of intention from inner intention zone to the outer intention zone where God will start to change the world around you. You have the right to choose. The will to have is created by the free energy of intention. As soon as the grip of control weakens, the limiting conditions of the mind fall away to reveal unity between the heart and the mind. All it requires is for you to abandon the tendency to take action aimed at increasing your sense of self-worth. Don't do actions just to make yourself feel better. So there's hope. I just want you to know that there's hope. Apathy that you're in because of your lack of confidence will dissipate when you start to have hope. So I'm telling you that there's hope We need it. We need hope to take action. And you have hope. This works. 
there's hope. Do not think about the means. Run the target slide in your mind. Go from the place of the wish fulfilled and place one foot in front of the other in the direction of your goal. Live out the wish fulfilled that pictures your life as it would be were the goal already achieved. This is what Zealand is saying in this chapter. This is why Neville Goddard and Zealand are talking about the same thing. This is why the technique is so important to reducing importance. Just come to that place of the wish fulfilled. Do you battle? with problems of self-worth and self-confidence, it's a part of this process. You can get temporary bouts of of confidence through meditations that can help you along the way, I believe. But ultimately, you need to go to the very core and the root of where your self-confidence is determined. Is it determined by what other people think? Reduce that importance. Reduce that. And then you'll have a newfound energy because you place a lot of energy into these insecurities. And you have this newfound energy and you can change the world at that point. This is an important section. It's a long section in the book on Transurfing. Consciously allowing you to deliberately reattune your energy towards realizing your best expectations instead of focusing on the worst possible outcomes. I hope this helps. And we'll definitely go more into this chapter, but I wanted to outline the beginning of it because I encounter a lot of people that are struggling with this, that, that theoretically know in their mind all of the lessons that we've talked about in reality creation and transforming their life. But deep down, they don't believe because they have been, they've been conditioned over many, many days. It's hard to break that conditioning. And a lot of that conditioning can be broken very quickly by understanding the importance. If you consciously become aware of feelings of insecurity that you have, try to find the beginning point for where those feelings are coming from. Are they coming from importance? Are you placing the importance? Does it really matter what they think? It doesn't. It doesn't matter what they think. And if I I don't recommend making your manifestation about changing what other people think about you. That will happen naturally as you achieve your goals. People will come into your life that think great things about you. But don't make that that important because it's not important. And you can overcome the limitations of your anxieties and fears and lack of confidence by learning your heart and mind and coordinating that It seems and sounds like such a simple cliche thing, but clearly it's not. People have been dealing with this this for hundreds of years, and some people are really, really good at it. Have you found a permanent solution to confidence or or self-awareness problems like that? I'd love to know about it. But... Try this out. If you become consciously aware of your feelings in the moment, and if you can attribute your feelings of lack of self-worth to importance that you've attributed to what other people think or to other factors, by limiting that and saying, well, you know, that's not important. You can get back some of that energy and you can apply it towards what you want. Run your target slides. Live from the desire of the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Because from that place, there is, it's already happened. So there's no importance I hope this helps. For full transcripts of every episode, you can go to therealityrevolution.com. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer and put them in the comments. I want to help you as much as possible because when I help you, it helps me. And welcome to the Reality Revolution.